or sitting here are part of this congregation and part of the body of Christ. And for those of you who may be joining us for the first time for worship, I'm Reverend Fraser Williamson, the minister here at St. Andrew's United Church in Fort Loring, and also the minister of St. Paul's United Church in Golden Valley. And we give thanks to Christopher Moore for the wonderful music, and uh, this week on the um, on the tracks for uh, uh, the online service, we have uh, Christopher Moore, uh, myself, and uh, Reverend Sandra Jenkinson singing. And um, as we gather now, in person and online, with the help of technology, we give thanks for the Holy Spirit, which moves beyond time and space and joined us together as the body of Christ. And now the acknowledgement of traditional territory. For thousands of years, indigenous people have lived in gratitude and reciprocity on this land and its waters. We are gathered on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe Nation, and we thankfully acknowledge their teachings and their ongoing protection of the land and water. And on this Reign of Christ Sunday, we are going to light the Christ candle. On this Reign of Christ Sunday, we light this Christ candle as a reminder that Christ is with us from the beginning to the end. And please turn to the bulletins for, your, for the call to worship. Grace to you and peace from the one who is, and who was, and who is to come. Grace to you and the peace of Jesus Christ, the faithful witness and bearer of truth. Lift your voices in praise and thanksgiving, for the end is no longer the end, but the beginning. Shout your alleluias. So we may renew our world with the vision of peace and justice that God would have us live. God is the Alpha and the Omega, our Lord, our God, the one who is and who was and who is to come. Alleluia. And we will sing our first hymn, number 213, in Voices United, Rejoice the Lord is King. Oh. 
Compassionate and wise as we help in your world. May it be this way by your grace, loving God. Jesus loves us and frees us from our sins. Therefore, let us confess our sins to God. Let us pray the prayer of confession. Holy God, Often we trust in the promises of earthly rulers instead of the power of your love. Help us to turn our hearts toward you. Restore in us your love and set us free. To forgive as we've been forgiven by the grace and mercy of Christ. Sisters and brothers, God loves us, forgives us, and frees us from our sins. Therefore, be at peace. Well, for young at heart time, I got a question. Have you made your New Year's plans yet? No? no? You were giggling though, Norma. Why were you giggling? I'm so far behind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, so what were last year's plans? <laughs> yeah, what were last year's plans? <laughs> New Year's doesn't mean anything to you. It doesn't mean anything to you, okay. Anybody else have New Year's plans already set up? Well, you've only got six more days. Yeah, you're saying what? Well, it's New Year's for the church. So do you know what year we're in right now? We're in year B. So this is the end of year B, and and uh, next Sunday is the first year or the first Sunday of year C, which there's a three-year cycle. So it's the beginning of the church year. And what comes with uh, what else comes with the beginning of the church year? What season does it start with? Advent which means coming, it's new beginnings. So um, today 
So this is the last Sunday that's talking about a new beginning. It's like God who is and was and is to come. So um, some of the scriptures that are that are here talk about Jesus' death, but in it there is new life. And it's also speaking about Jesus coming again. And, and Advent is the beginning of Jesus' coming as we wait for the birth of the baby Jesus coming to the world. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it, so you've got, now, now I've warned you that New Year's is, is next week, so you can get your plans ready. I, I know um, I used to, with New Year's Eve on December 31st, I'd stay up all the time, but I found after I hit 40, I would have to, rest in the afternoon to make sure I was still awake for New Year's. I don't know if you've had to do that as well, but I have, so <laughs> it's uh, to get there. So, um, but yeah, so remember it's New Year's and uh, there's actually a joke that shows up on Facebook that goes for ministers and it says, and it shows up a few weeks after Advent starts and it says, I keep on, uh, and last year it said, um, I keep on forgetting to put year B on my chest. Instead of, I'll read, you, you know the joke that everybody keeps on writing the previous year when they write their checks, so that's the joke there. It keeps on, I keep on forgetting to put year B on my checks, so i got to remember that too. And now, let us pray together the prayer for illumination. Come, Holy Spirit, open our hearts to receive a word of truth, and set us free to follow in the power of Christ's love. Amen. And our psalm today is Psalm 132, parts 1 and 2, and it's found in pages 854 and 855 of the um, of Voices United. I will not enter my house, nor will I climb into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes, not even to let my eyelids droop, until I find a place for God, for the mighty one of Jacob. Servant David's sake, do not reject your anointed. Make a pure promise to David, a promise that will never be revoked. One of your own children I will set upon your throne. As the end of her and keep my covenant, the teaching that I give them, their descendants too shall sit on your throne in succession forever. Yep. Arise, O oh God, make this the place where in your name shall dwell. God has chosen Zion. God has desired it for a home. Here I will rest forever. Here I will dwell, for it is my delight. Arise, O oh God, make this the place where I will bless the city with abundant food and satisfy its poor with bread. Salvation. Its faithful people will rejoice and sing. There I will make a branch sprout for David. I will prepare a lamp for my anointed. His enemies I will clothe with shame. 
but on its head the crown will sparkle. Oh, rise, oh God, and make this the place where in your name shall dwell. And now our reading from the book of Revelation. It's chapter 1, verses 4b to 8, found on page 994 of the Pew Bibles. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Our scripture last week in the Gospel of Mark ended with the line, this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Our scripture this week which is part of the beginning of the book of Revelation, has a similar message. In our modern English language, the message of this week's scripture can be summed up by saying, wait, there is more to come. The book of Revelation has been misunderstood by many. Many move, movies have, and other writers have deemed it as the process in which God is ending the world. These movies and these interpretations have created fear among many. Last week's scripture was called by many scholars to be the little apocalypse. And this week's scripture in the book of Revelation is deemed to be the big apocalypse. And the book of Revelation is, is quite unique as it is, it has two genres of biblical writing. It is an apocalyptic writing and there are other apocalyptic writings like the book of Daniel that are written in the Old Testament. But it's also an epistle. It's an epistle because in the first part of chapter 1 of verse 4, it says, John to the seven churches that are in Asia. And Asia is not the continent of Asia that we are familiar with today. Biblical historians state that the seven churches in Asia are churches in Asia Minor, which is the western part of modern-day Turkey. This letter was intended to be read aloud in those churches so all could hear the message. These churches in Asia were the early Christian churches in the area. These churches were the followers of the disciple John. And being Christian churches, they believed the message of Christ. They believed in the hope of new life in the risen Christ. But being a Christian in the Roman Empire during that time was dangerous. The early Christians lived with the threat of persecution. Their lives were at risk. 
And at the time that this was read, and many were pers already persecuted, and as more and more were persecuted, hope began to diminish. Suffering was around them as they watched their other Christian friends die in cruel ways. Many of them were killed in public arenas being fed to wild animals. Seeing this, many began to lose faith. Many questioned whether it was worth it, the time to be a Christian. Many of these followers who believed that Christ was sent to change and rule the world lost hope as they faced challenges and opposition. Amidst the horrors that they were seeing, our scripture today begins with the greeting of the letter. And this greeting says, Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. The peace given in this letter is from God and separate from that in this letter from God is also greetings from Jesus Christ who is described as the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. This introduction is words of hope. Introducing the message of hope in the book of Revelation. It states and reminds the readers of that time that what they believe. When looking at the original translation, the word witness also means martyr. So in this greeting, it states that Jesus was the faithful martyr who became the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings. This is the reason why this Sunday we celebrate the reign of Christ. Jesus' coronation happened on the cross. He was given a crown of thorns and his reign began with his death. He was the faithful martyr and when he rose on that first Easter morning, he began his reign as the firstborn of the dead. From that moment, the world began to change. From that moment came the promise of eternal life. But as our scripture last week states, and this week states, the action on the cross was only the beginning. The letter says to the readers, wait, there is more to come. The writer of this letter in Apocalypse is saying there is more to come. It is telling the readers not to lose hope. This was important when suffering was all around them. And with the suffering, many did not see hope. Many did not see God's love and peace reaching out to them. Some of them were questioning how the God of love uh, could let these things happen. In the book of Revelation, if you look a little further and read right into it, many sufferings and bad things are listed. And the imagery is devastating. And that's why there's movies about it. And it shows the physical world being destroyed. The writer of Revelation is encouraging the readers to keep faith when faced with these many horrors. Many think the book of Revelation is the play-by-play -play of the end of the world, and it is the revelation of the end of the world. But it's not. It is the revelation of the reign of Christ in the world. The, re the reign began with Jesus' death and resurrection, 
but it continues with the hope that Jesus' reign will continue forever. In verse 7, it gives a glimpse of the victory of Christ. It tells the readers to look up because Jesus is coming in the clouds. And it is with his coming that the readers would enter in a time of peace against their enemies. In their time of suffering, the first readers and hearers of this letter are given hope that their oppressors, the Roman Empire, will be defeated and Jesus will come again to reign in a time of peace. And saying that Jesus was coming with the clouds reminds the readers and hearers of God's presence in a cloud when the Hebrew people were led out of Egypt. God was with them in their suffering and in their challenges in the wilderness. It also reminds the hearers that the people did not reach the promised land right away. It took 40 years, but during the time in the wilderness, God was there. God was there when they faced challenges, and God was there when they had doubts and fears. And it reminds them that eventually the promise was fulfilled eventually. Revelation reminds the readers that the reign of Christ began with his death and resurrection and that there will be a time of peace ahead. The letter of Revelation reveals Jesus who came to establish his reign. It reveals that God was present in Jesus and that God is with us as we face our own sufferings and challenges. It reminds the readers and hearers that the time of everlasting peace will eventually come. When we look at our world today, many like those in the early church may have lost hope in God's presence and peace and eternal life. Many people say that the tragedies that are happening around us seem like the end of the world. When we see violence, many doubt God's reign of love. When we see te a teenager take matters into his own hands, shooting at protesters, and when we see him acquitted, we wonder where is God's reign of love. When we see the effects of climate change in the province of British Columbia, many ask, why could God let this happen? When we see poverty in the world, even in our own communities, sometimes we wonder if God is there. When we see loved ones die, we are left in grief. We are in grief because we are without the presence of our loved ones. And because of that, our world has changed. The scripture and the book of Revelation gives us hope. It assures us that God is present in our suffering. It assures us that this suffering is not the end. It assures us that Christ will come again, and it reminds us of the time that Jesus came to earth the first time to establish his reign of love and peace. With that assurance, we are instructed to wait, as there is more to come. Thanks be to God. Amen. And this is the time in the service that we set aside for offerings to God. We have been blessed with so many gifts, including the presence of uh, God through the Holy Spirit. And it is now time to return God's greatness to others in this world. For those of you who are in person, you can leave your offerings at the plate at the back. For those who are worshiping with us online, offerings can be made using PAR, which is pre-authorized remittance, checks, envelopes, dropped off the local treasure, and even through Canada Helps. 
Thank you for finding a way to give, to give that works for you. Your offerings make a difference not only in sustaining the ministry and mission of the whole church, but also enabling each church to reach out and respond to the needs in the local community and beyond through the work of the United Church's Mission and Service Fund. We know that to uh, we know that throughout this past year and a half, you've continued to give faithfully to your local church, and we thank you so much. And if you're just beginning to worship with us and wish to donate to any of our churches, all of the addresses are provided at the end of the service. Let us take a moment now to bless our all of our offering given over the last week by singing more voices, number 191, What Can I Do? Bless us as we continue to become ever more your people of the way of Jesus. Equip us in our self-giving for your reign here and now. Amen. For our mission and work of the church, we do have quite a few announcements. Uh, the most important is we have St. Andrew's Council is meeting at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning here at the church. Um, I know there's at least three members of council and uh, our, all three of you will be there. I just want to make sure we have uh, have all of them present. So I think we actually already have quorum already. So we can, um, and hopefully the others will come as well. Um, then next week uh, is Advent one. I said it's New Year's, so we're gonna have our New Year's celebration and uh, that's when you can officially put up Christmas decorations everywhere. So that's the so you can do that. So and at St. Paul's, the recording will be at St. Paul's next week. It's their annual memorial tree service, uh, and there will be a fair number of um, of ornaments added to those two trees. And next Sunday at twelve thirty p.m. Um, the official board, which is the count, uh, St. Andrew's Council, uh, the stewards of St. Paul's and the elders of St. Paul's will all meet here for an official board meeting at 1230, and that's obviously after the service at St. Paul's. And Sunday, December 5th at 2 p.m., Almagrin Choral Society is having a Christmas concert at 250 Clark and Powassan. Tickets are $15 each, and uh, please contact me if you would like to purchase tickets. And Sunday, December 12th, is the White Gift Serve to this, where you can place donations in white envelopes to go to the Argyle Food Bank. And here's some good news here. A little Christmas cheer, Friday, December 17th, from 2 to 4 and 6 to 8, there's an open house at the Sundridge Match, which is 63 Main Street, Sundridge. So come out for some Christmas cheer at either of those times. And um, Sunday, December 19th is Advent 4, and we will have Holy Communion. And they're still uh, making cookies right now for St. Paul's uh, uh, cookie tins, and 
Uh, each den has four dozen homemade nut free cookies. And you can call Connie at 705 729 1066 to pre order by next Sunday. And the pickup date is December 4th from 10 to 11 at the church. And is there any other announcements? I know that the, uh, I've heard the spaghetti dinner went well, so everybody got full of spaghetti, I hope. Good. If there's no other announcements, we'll move to the minute for mission. According to the Canadian Mental Health Association, one in five Canadians experience mental health problems. Your mission and service gifts help. In his own words, Champ shares how the mental health support he received through the Bissell Center, an organization supported through your mission and service gifts, helped him change his life. He says, my name is Chance. I'm 25 years old and I live at Hope Terrace a permanent supportive home that is run by the Bissell Center. I have fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, a type of brain injury with no cure. So I need to help with things like coping with my emotions, keeping my appointments and cooking before I moved. And before I moved into the Hope Terrace residence, life was frustrating and stressful. I used to live at my grandmother's house along with my mom and my four other family members. When everyone was home, it was chaos, which made it even harder to manage my emotions. Even happy emotions were too much at times. Mom and I knew I needed help, but we didn't have money, and we didn't know where to start. So a few years ago, I tagged along with my friend to the Bissell Center's Easter meal. He was getting help from Bissell and seemed to like it enough. Maybe I could get help too. It was at that very meal that I first heard about Bissell's mental health resources and the Hope Terrace House. When I was invited to move into the Hope Terrace a few months later, Mom and I both agreed it would be a good decision. I finally, finally felt some hope. Maybe life doesn't have to be so hard all the time. Maybe I could have a better life. The staff were here to help me with the things that overwhelmed me the most, like budgeting, cooking, and dealing with my emotions. They are awesome. They're really good, kind people. They're my family. Without the support that I regularly would get here, I don't know where I'd be. Thank you for your generosity through the gift submission and service. Let us now take some time for prayer. Almighty God, you have exalted Jesus over all creation to lead us into truth. Receive the prayers we offer in his name and for the world you so dearly love. Give wisdom to all leaders and people to resist the earthly powers that destroy our common life. Guide us in the way. Bring unity of mission to your church and fill us with the joy for your gospel as we invite others into your reign. Enfold all who suffer in body, mind, or soul into the comfort of your healing and enable us to extend our arms in kindness as witness to your love. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, we remember those who are dying and who have died. May they know the joy of your never-ending realm of peace.
sovereign God. You sent Jesus to inaugurate a world of justice and peace through the power of your spirit. And now we pray silently those persons or concerns that are in our hearts. We gather all these prayers in the name of the one you sent to establish your reign over us, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, and now our final hymn, number 211, Crown Him with Many Crowns. to proclaim 
this reign of love and peace. As you go out to proclaim this holy reign, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace.